Hello everyone, my name is BatnobyX, and today I wanted to go over scale, and how to kind of keep your level scaled to a more proper size. Now, I know a lot of people have issues keeping up a scale when they draw their map, so I went ahead and decided to go ahead and draw a small one. So, of course there's a lot more rooms than this, but this gives you the idea. So I made a rectangle and I put a room inside of it, and I measured the rectangle, I gave it 35 feet for the base, and I used that base to measure the side which came out to be 12 foot long. So with, with knowing these are 35 and 12 feet long, I was able to go ahead and get the interior designed. So I was able to get six foot by going directly at the center point. It might be a little off, but I'm not making a full game with this. And then this one's eight feet as it's about a foot to two. Uh, it's about one to two feet longer. I'm going to go with two feet longer because I can adjust that in the modeling or the level design a lot easier. What, what this allows me to do is I can set a finite amount of space and then go into the programs, model it, or even uh, level design it into the proper scale. So knowing that it's 35 to 12, by, to 12 feet, I can actually go into Unreal. And this is something that's pretty neat that I don't know if a lot of people know is uh, if you go to the perspective, you can go to top orthographic or side or any of them. If you hold the middle mouse button and it drags across and it has this counter in this line right here. So this is a little measuring tool you can use from any of the orthographic views, bottom, left, right, you name it. So one thing you might wonder is what is that number? Well, that number is the, if I go to editor preferences and I type in measurement, I can look at the measuring tool units. Currently it's set to centimeters. I can change it to meters or kilometers. And if I keep it at centimeters and then I click my middle mouse and drag it across, that means this little hill right here is exactly, if I get it aligned right, right there, 600 centimeters. So I would know that if I wanted to redesign that little hill right there, I could make it exactly 600 millimeters. But if I wanted to use this tool to build a house, I could easily go to SM underscore cube. If I want this house to be the exact same exact scale that I have on there, I can line it up. I can go to perspective top, find my little cube that I placed. There we go. And I can learn that this cube is exactly 100 centimeters long. So 100 centimeters, that makes this 3.2 feet. Or if I go into meters, makes it one meter exactly. So if I recalculate it to meters, if I go to my foot and I recalculate it into meters, I go 35. I know that this thing needs a scale of exactly 10.668. Boom, that is the exact width that it needs to be. And then the other one is 12. So if I go to 12, I can put the next one to 3.6576. Boom. And there we go. Now we've got our properly scaled model. To perspective, there we go. If I play my little character here, we'll see the character's about six feet tall. character is right here. If I lay him down, yeah, it would take about two of them to cover this thing. I walk over here, boom. So this is of course a little small for a house, but I wanted to go over and show you that that's how you get that proper scale. So I could easily amp it up, change the numbers around a bit. So the normal average single home is 28 to 60 feet deep. So if I was to calculate that over here to this being 30 foot, then I know if three of these could fit there, that makes this 90 feet, 38 feet. So it's more common for them to be 38 feet, which is fair. This is a rather wide drawing, so this would be more accurate. So if I did this, be make it 38 feet. Of course, I'd probably want to remeasure and get the proper scale here. But eight and then 16, I could probably widen this a little bit more to about here. 
But yeah, we got the 30. Well, it'll only eight, be eight feet longer. So this is way longer than eight feet now. Because it was going off of our original scale. So it's all about finding that proper scale that you're going for off the bat. And when you're doing it in drawing form, it's really easy to redo. And then it's smart to actually look at the proper scaling of houses, get references from real life. Because if you're going off of real life measurements, then it's easier to learn those, get references, and calculate them back into here. So this falls over. I'll use a good eight foot, so that makes 38 by 30, which allows us to have a lot of room to play with. Because 38 by 30 is a lot of meters, so 30, which is the nine, four, and then 38, which makes this 11.5825. This is the average house. So yeah, plenty of room to walk around. So yeah, that's how you get the proper scaling. I bet I have a house around here somewhere. But yeah, that's a good way to do it using measurements and everything. Another good way, a little simple tip is to take your character I take my sandbox character, which is the one I use for a lot of stuff. Except right here, I have the, I got their exact height. But then as I'm building the area around them, I can really use them to adjust and see just how much space is being used. Because if I want a good jump, yeah, knowing the distance the character could jump and everything is nice. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it looks nice. Because if I want a cinematic jump I want it to look nice alongside the scale of the character rather than just measured out to be good and you could set it up to where it goes and works properly and then go through and replace the meshes and do that environment level design so yeah those are the few different ways that you can go about scaling your level more properly and uh, those are writing it drawing the level and making sure to actually put your measurements down and get your references and everything then the other one is to go into Unreal and actually use the orthographic view and use the middle mouse button with your project settings, editor preferences, and changing this to whichever measurement style you like the most, with a meter, centimeter, and such. And then uh, the, thir the final one is to place the character down and use them as a scale for everything that's being placed around. So that way you know, okay, so I need to keep this much space for the player to be able to walk through there. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of narrows down and helps you kind of keep an eye on how your scale works. Because if you build a building that's 100 feet tall, you want it to be 100 feet tall. Because if I build a building that's pretty nice size, let's click off the character. Cube grid. Oh, let's click off that. Cube grid. So one, then I'm going to go and make the building seem pretty tall. Cool. So the, that building looks nice. And now the character looks tiny compared to them, which, okay. We know this is a one meter tall cube. So if I want the building to be as tall as the Empire State Building, I want it to be 1,453 feet tall. So I need 1,450 feet, which will make this be 441.96. And you'll see that is the actual scale of a real of the Empire State Building. So that building looked really tall compared to the character. But then that's like the scale of a skyscraper right here. It goes so high up, it's reaching into the atmosphere of the level. Let's go with something a bit smaller. Uh, let's go with a building 
Lar how tall is a large building in a city? So if we take this scale, which is 492 feet, which is a much more understandable f height, 492, which is still 149.962, which we can copy. And if we paste that in here, that still dwarfs our little building here, which is already set to be pretty tall. So keeping in mind all these numbers for scale, I can actually look at how wide they are, how uh, wide is a large building in a city. And then I can look at 100 to 400 feet. So we'll go with the classic 200 feet wide, which makes it 200 feet, which is 60.96. If I put that on this large building, boom. That is how massive the building becomes. So when you start breaking down into scale, you start seeing, okay, so if I'm looking right next to the character, then everything seems massive. But that's really what helps sell your scale way more. So yeah, you can have buildings that are smaller that make the character seem small still. But if I want the character to walk around and feel like they're actually in a city, if I scale these buildings to be the proper size, then that really does help. And then, so if I went 60, I'm gonna go with 40 for the depth. And you'll see that now the character is so small that they can walk right up to it and really just be puny. But what that helps with is if I take this and I really wanted to scale the size of a road. How wide is a road in a city? 24 feet wide. So parking lot both sides can be much wider. Okay, so 24 feet, 17. So if I copy this, set it back down to one, and then I set the width, there we go. Here's the width of your average road. And we go to sidewalk and that would be eight feet to 12 feet. So we'll go, we'll break it down to 10 foot. So that makes this three. So if I go over here and duplicate, I can take this one, boom, slide it over a little bit right next to it and then take it up. We put the character on it. There we go. Now the character is on a road. Building to their left is proper scale. The road is to proper scale. All we need to do now is slide this over. There we go. And then we can slide this building over as well. Because we have such a wide range of heights to play with, I can actually shrink this building from the 149 that it is. Yeah, let me increase that. So the 149 it is to 150. I mean to 120. And the building is still massive, but now we've got some variation on height. So now we've got the scaled road properly, the height, and what this is really going to let us do is if we take this road right here, and this is where a lot of lo games lose their uh, depth when it comes to being in cities and some other things. So we take this road, we take this sidewalk, go ahead and duplicate the sidewalk, slide, slide it over. We can connect to the end of this sidewalk right here. We need to get this road over here. 
And it's okay to extend this variant a little bit because it's not about how long the road is. Because the road has to at least match the length of the building. So here we go, slide it over, slide it across, duplicate this, duplicate these across, actually go ahead and delete that one, and then slide this over. And then now we can take our building and we can duplicate this over. And set this to be 70 tall. So what this has done is it gives us a whole another scale of this of these buildings. If we use the sun. You'll see this is the average sidewalk of a city. And this is what your character would look like walking through that city. So this helps you really look at how big scale really works. Because if you're in a small town, of course, your numbers would be different. But just this little exercise of looking at this road and these the sidewalks and the three buildings can give you a whole nother perspective on how big things actually are. So when you're working on massive projects or even outdoor adventure projects, then it's really important to know just how tall they are. So if I wanted to look at how tall is Mount Fuji. Three thousand seven hundred and seventy six meters. So if I was to actually scale a landscape to three thousand seven hundred and seventy six meters. It's so big the cube broke. There we go. I would have to scale and sculpt the mountain to be that tall. Which is just amazing how large that is so keep in mind that these scales i'm of course i'm using some extremes but these are scales that fit the real world so if you're trying to make your game feel kind of realistic or even have a scale that actually makes the character feel like they're in a world that's truly built come up with a scale system for that world or even use a combination of real world with a custom set of sizes. And that's how you're really going to get your scales to set up. You now know the tools for measuring it. And you know how big the, the SM cube is. And you can use all these to get the proper scaling for your game's level and everything. If you don't have the SM cube in your project, it's pretty simple. Add and then add feature content pack and any one of these will add the sm cube the sm cube is that little gridded cube on the floor in this level right here for their prototyping so yeah i hope you all learned a lot from this video i hope this helps you understand how wild scale actually is and helps you understand it a bit more i hope you all uh find this video enjoyable. If you did, please consider hitting like. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. But yeah, other than that, I really hope you all have a good night and truly do hope you have good luck game developing.